All right, Psalmcasters, we're at Psalm 26 this time around. Really kind of particular, a little peculiar in the Psalm world. It is a Psalm of vindication. Definitely a Psalm of David who seemed particularly interested in being vindicated from sins both real and imagined. But here we are with Psalm 26. Vindicate me, O God, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for your love is ever before me, and I will walk continually in your truth. I do not sit with deceitful men. I do not consort with hypocrites or abhor the assembly of evildoers and refuse to sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go about your altar, O Lord, proclaiming aloud your praise and telling all of your wonderful deeds. I love the house where you live, O Lord, and the place where your glory dwells. Do not take away my soul along with sinners, my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are wicked schemes, in whose right hands are full of bribes. For I lead a blameless life. Redeem me and be merciful to me. My feet stand on level ground. In the great assembly, I will praise the Lord. That ends the reading. So in Psalm 25, which Psalm was right before, there was a little bit of this call for vindication, and there have been in the previous Psalms. David is in a very particular place and one that we don't expect leaders in the West to occupy these days, in that he was expected to be both priest and king. So the king part was primarily a uh, military title, much more than a governance piece, but you know we expect that kings would be responsible for both of those. Uh, David is also responsible to be the priest leader of the temple, and so any allegations of impropriety, um, unworthiness, are going to undercut both his role as priest and as king. So that's, wow, you know, that's a tough place to be in. Um, and David, as we know, historically, has a fair number of blemishes on his record. And this particular psalm, though, he's saying, look, I am I'm, am doing the right things. I'm being trustworthy. I'm being true. I'm being right. And perhaps it is so. It is also a case, though, maybe he doth protest too much. What does that mean for us? I think that um, it's very easy um, in these days to get pigeonholed into being one thing, into being a person who is trustworthy or not. And based on one incident, one point in the timeline, you can be labeled untrustworthy, um, being right or wrong or good or bad. And in the snapshot, sure, you can see those kinds of pieces. Uh, the question is, what is the measure of a person's life? And what lessons do they learn from the um, mistakes that have might have been made at any point? I'm hoping for a little more grace. I'm hoping for a little more uh, of a long view and that my life, that our lives as people of faith can be just uh, looking more like a motion picture than as a snapshot in time. So that's my hope. Let's have a prayer. God, let our lives be long-term examples of your grace at work. And even when we make those mistakes, let them be openings for more hope and learning. Amen.